The Gauteng High Court in Pretoria has heard that the murder of former Orlando Pirates goalkeeper Senzo Mayua was not a robbery gone wrong, but a contract killing. The trial against five men accused of killing former Bafana Bafana goalkeeper resumed in court this Monday after a nearly two-month break. Yikes. Hey, hey, Mzansi. Hello and welcome to Entertainment News, Mzansi. If you're new to my channel, you know you're here for the stories. Go ahead, click the subscribe button. Yes, of course, the bell and you'll never miss an update. The lead investigator of the Mayua's murder case, Brigadier Bongani Geninda, returned to the witness stand for the continuation of his cross-examination. Geninda has been testifying in a trial within a trial, which is taking place to determine the admissibility of confession statements, pointing out and warning statements by the accused. During proceedings, advocate Tulanim Gomezulu continued his cross-examination by quizzing the investigating officer about the J-50 warrant of arrest issued for his clients, Muzigao Kulelo Sibia and Bongani Ntanzi. The warrants were issued on the 23rd of October 2020 and were executed three days later. All five men made their first appearance in the Boxback Magistrate Court in connection to Mayua's murder on the 27th of October. Ngomezulu questioned Kaninda why the application, along with the investigators supporting affidavit filed by the state requesting the warrants to be issued, was presented before the Boxback Magistrate Court when Mayua was killed in Forsteris. While the witness agreed the crime was committed in Forsteris, he said Boxback Magistrate Court fell under the same jurisdiction. It will be trying to mislead this court and trying to create an impression that Boxburg doesn't fall within the jurisdiction of Forstlers. And I think Mr. Mgomezulu knows that. Forstlers is a district court. And Boxburg, you get the regional court within the district of that area. It's one district, so there's nothing peculiar or unlawful that was done, Gininda said. Mgomezulu, however, contended that the application was filed in the wrong court. The defense lawyer argued that the warrant of arrest was issued unlawfully because Sibia and Danzi were already in custody. But, Gininda said, the accused had been detained for different cases. The warrant of arrest or the J-50, it means is a means of taking someone to court. It must not be misconstrued as a violation of the rights of the person that is being arrested. In any event, Section 36 of the Constitution has limitation clause. Once a case is made and the warrant is authorized, what do you do? The person must appear in court and the warrant of arrest is the means of taking someone to court as it can be a summons or any other thing. I'm not aware of any provision in 43 of the Criminal Procedure Act that says if the person is in custody, you cannot execute a warrant, he said. Geninda then proceeded to read out his affidavit in court, which revealed that Mayiwa's murder was a contract killing rather than the initial suspicion that it was a robbery gone wrong. Investigations, which resulted in evidence under oath, revealed that the victim was murdered as a contractual assassination or hit rather than a robbery or robbery gone wrong. Evidence revealed that suspects actively participated in the planning and execution of the contractual murder of Senzo Miwa. The documents read, the investigation officer, Arthur David, also detailed the alleged role of each of the accused and how they were linked to the crime. Sibia, according to the affidavit, was linked to the crime by witness statements after he boasted to his close associates in Guazulu Natal about his alleged involvement along with his co-accused in Mayua's killing. His admissions were reported to the police by the close associates. The accused was further linked with uh, circumstantial evidence wherein he, minutes after the incident, disclosed and made remarks at a family gathering that he attended in Forstlers for the killing of Senzo Miwa, even before the death was reported in the media. He is further linked by means of a former confession he made to the Commission Independent Officer on the 30th of May 2020. The suspect further made a formal pointing out to the sequence prior to the incident. Gininda further read his affidavit. Now, Mayua was fatally shot by armed intruders at the Forstler's family home of his then-girlfriend, singer Kelly Kumala, on the 26th of October 2014. Sibia Ndanzi, Mtobi Simnube, Mtogazasini Mapisa and Fisogu Tlinduli are on trial for the former Orlando Pirates goalkeeper's killing and have pleaded not guilty. It was previously heard in court that Kelly received two phone calls from Duli. The first call was made on the 2nd of August 2014, followed by another on the 15th of October 2014, just a week before Mayua's death. 
Additionally, Danzi has already been identified by at least two witnesses as one of the armed intruders who entered the Kumala household. Now, there you have it, Mzansi. The court proceedings have just uh, proceeded and still within a trial within a trial after at least two, one or two months of uh, a halt. Now, then there is still more details that, of course, this witness will then disclose as he is still under cross-examination by the defense. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. You know I love to hear from you, but for now, you know I will bring you the updates hotter just the way you like it.